Hello my loves, welcome back to another video. I'm Ashley and today I have a very exciting video because this comes in two parts. We have a mystery fantasy book haul and the try a chapter situation. I figured it would be fun to not only open up a mystery book haul but also try the books that are actually in there and just kind of give first impressions and that kind of thing. So yeah, for this video I am working with a box of stories which I am so excited about because I've seen this brand around quite a lot now and it's always been a thing that I've been intrigued about. So when they got in touch with me I was very very excited and it is a box of stories that I will be unboxing today in this really quite large box. <laughs> There are so many books published every single year and around 70 million of them go to waste. So what a box of stories aims to do is take those books, pop them into their algorithm which then puts together thousands and thousands of book reviews, things said in book forums, book critics, blogs, all of those kind of things. It basically takes any kind of review of these books, compiles them together and then creates a curated box of these books which do actually have decent reviews, it's just that maybe they didn't get the marketing that it needed or maybe they're underrated in some way. The sort of books that would be considered hidden gems and would actually be a shame just seeing go into waste. So not only does every single one of these boxes save four of those books, but it also brings you a box of surprise books based on a theme of your choice. So you can have young adult books, you can have just general fiction, you can have crime. This one in particular is the fantasy and sci-fi box which I believe is on a limited release and these are all specific surprises for you. It's very unlikely that you'll get the same books as somebody else. And a portion of all of the profits made through a box of stories is donated back into charities which help promote literacy. So it's just... <laughs> I love all of that, I love it so much. These subscriptions can be tailored to how you want them, you don't necessarily have to have them every month if you want to, you can choose to have them every one, two, three, four months and just get them every so often, you can also swap between which genres you want to receive, it's very much up to you how it works so I just think it could be a pretty good one to check out, you can even gift them if you want to so if you're out of gift ideas it could be pretty fun to just gift somebody a mystery book haul, I mean I'm having a great time with this already and I haven't even opened the box yet so I think it would be a pretty good gift idea because it's just fun. <laughs> and if you are already interested I do have a discount code for you all so if you follow the link down below and use the code FROLIC you can get 30% off your first box so pretty decent discount if you do want to give it a go. But without further ado let's do the mystery haul. I am a little bit nervous because I do already have so many fantasy books that I'm just like what if there's a duplicate in here? We'll see how it goes, we'll see how it goes. That's good. <laughs> Is there more tape? No, I'm just incapable, okay. Okay, so the first thing I see is this, which basically tells you more about the subscription, how you can swap things. I can see glimpses of three out of four books so far, and I don't recognize any of them. Ooh. It does also say on the lid of the box, 77 million books are destroyed in the UK every year. 83% of those books pulped before they have even been read. We want to save these amazing books from being lost in time forever. Every box you get saves four amazing books and you discover four incredible authors. So thank you for helping us on our mission. Okay, I'm definitely intrigued by this one. Oof, this is chonky. So this is The Thousand Deaths of Ardor Ben by Tyler Whitesides. Never heard of this before. Meet Ordo Ben, Rue's artist extraordinaire. Hired by a mysterious priest to attempt his most daring heist yet, Ordo knows he'll need more than quick wits and sleight of hand. Assembling a dream team of forgers, schemers and thieves, he sets out to steal from the most powerful king the realm has ever known. But it soon becomes clear there's more at stake than fame and glory. Ord and his team might just be the last hope for human civilization. Hot damn, this is the first book in the Kingdom of Grit series. Uh, this looks like a dinosaur, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. We have a map inside. Hmm, I'm intrigued. Okay, okay. <laughs> we also have one which reminds me of the Joker <laughs> called Night Terrors, a Shadow Watch novel. In a world where dreams can cross into reality, what would it take for you to team up with your childhood nightmare? What even was my childhood nightmare? I'm not sure. Meet Detective Audra and her partner Mr. Jinx, the clown who haunted her childhood dreams. Together they are working to protect the real world from Maelstrom, the world of dreams, but then things start to go sideways and they find themselves in disgrace. 
It doesn't take long for Audra and Jinx to realise that there is something sinister afoot. More dreams are escaping to the real world than ever before, and it's up to them to save both worlds before it's too late. Why does this remind me of the Far Away Tree collection by Enid Blyton that I read when I was really young? It's like the complete opposite vibes, but it's just the way that they're all like different worlds. There's the reality and then there's this kind of dream world situation. I mean, not something that I've ever read anything like before, that much I can say already, but... <laughs> Apparently this is an urban fantasy and I mean, I'm intrigued purely because I'm baffled. <laughs> we'll see how the first chapter of this goes. We then have what looks like more of a sci-fi. This is The Lazarus War. The Lazarus? Lazarus? Oh no. <laughs> This book by Jamie Sawyer. Mankind has spread to the stars only to become locked in warfare with an insidious alien race. Standing against them is Captain Comrade Harris, a man who has died hundreds of times at running suicide missions in simulant bodies. Known as Lazarus, he is a man addicted to death, but on his elite team's latest mission, he may not be coming back. Hmm, this is apparently book one in the Artifact series. Oh, this book is called Artifact. The series is called this. I haven't read many sci-fi books but it is a genre that I've been wanting to get into more. I do have a few on my shelves that I've been wanting to try so I'm definitely happy to add this one and see what it's like. And then the final book, the cover of this is really like eye-catching because this one is The Imaginary Corpse by Tyler Hayes. Look at that for a cover. In a world where Toy Story meets Sin City. <laughs> A dinosaur detective battles his own trauma and a remorseless serial killer hell-bent on shaking up an already messed up town. Wow, that's a... that's a... that's a sentence. Tippy the Triceratops was once someone's best friend, a sunshine yellow toy detective, imagined to help make sense of the world. But inescapable tragedy forced Tippy to be set aside, still loved, still real, and now abandoned. So he found a home in the underbelly of the imagination, a place called Still Real. But friends keep disappearing there, and Tippy is left chasing a mysterious figure who can do the impossible, kill an idea, permanently. With fear and anxiety already ripe on the streets of Playtime Town, Tippy must face his own demons before all that's left is imaginary corpses. Wow, Toy Story got dark. <laughs> I love this! I love how random these books are. I would never have thought to pick up stuff like this, but we're gonna give it a go. We're gonna give it a go. So these are the books that I received in my haul. I have to say this one, of course the biggest one, it sounds more like my kind of thing specifically. These ones I'm not too sure about, but I'm definitely intrigued because of how random they are. And this box definitely succeeded in finding things that I do not have on my shelves already. So we are going to try the first chapter of each of these books and I'll let you know what my first impression are. I'm so intrigued by how this is gonna turn out. Okay, here we go. Okay, so we're now a bit later in the day and I have been trying to decide which order to try these in. <laughs> I think what I'm going to do is leave this one to last because I think this one has the most potential to be my kind of thing. But I think I might start with the sci-fi because I have been actively wanting to get into sci-fi more, so let's try the sci-fi. I am aiming to try a chapter. This one is, let's have a look, 26 pages. So I'm going to have a read of those and see what my first impressions are. Okay, one thing I've noticed about this already, I am five pages in, but I've noticed that this definitely doesn't hold your hand when it comes to tech talk. Not necessarily because it's difficult to read, but like it's just spouting all of the language that you would associate with like spaceships and stuff, talking about the troop compartments and all these different areas of a spaceship or it's just saying what's happening without overly explaining what all of the different things mean. It's not difficult to follow though, so that's always a good sign. <laughs> Okay, so I've actually reached a good point just before the chapter ends to pause because this is very information heavy, but I'm kind of picking out the bits of information that I find interesting. For instance, they seem to have these suits that just help them along with everything. It seems to give them stuff that will keep their energy levels what it needs to be, keeping the adrenaline low, just to be able to keep them going throughout whatever it is they're doing. And these suits seem to be able to do quite a lot of different things. For instance, it just mentioned that it can camouflage them so that they're harder to aim at. It mentioned that it can give them more strength in their hands and stuff like that. So I find that particularly interesting. As for what they're actually doing, they seem to be trying to solve a mystery of sorts. They've just gone onto a ship that seems to be abandoned or they're not quite sure what happened to its crew. I keep mentioning something called the Krell and it hasn't really explained what they are, but they're speaking about it as if it's a race of aliens and it does mention on the back that they are a 
locked in warfare with an insidious alien race, so I'm wondering if that's them. And we also seem to have a few other topics being introduced, such as a political problem, because there's one member of the crew who just keeps being like, but the law and the treaty and you can't do these things and there's this alliance that you're breaking and he seems really concerned by the actual like rules and political systems. And we also did briefly touch upon religion in this, which is interesting because I don't think I've seen that in a sci-fi book specifically, so I'm wondering if that's going to be a theme in this one. I'm intrigued, I'm intrigued. I do definitely think that the atmosphere is something that could take me a little while to get used to because it's more of a military sci-fi, so it's very much like fighting, tactics, that kind of thing, whereas I'm more of a character-based person when it comes to sci-fi, if there's anything that I do know, but the mystery does have me intrigued and I don't even think that's one of the main things of this story particularly. I think there is a mystery of sorts that we're trying to figure out, but I don't think what I've read so far is it. So the intrigue is definitely there. I'd be glad to add this one to my shelves actually. It definitely seems like a gritty sci-fi, which is different to the ones that I seem to have on my shelves at the minute. So this could give me a good, a good look into other types of sci-fi, see if this is something that I would enjoy. So would definitely be interested in continuing. But I am going to pick up this one now, I think, the clown one. Night Terrors, the one in which somebody has to work with her childhood terror, which is a clown called Mr. Jinx. <laughs> I'm still just like, what is the story? In fact, I'll read you the first paragraph so that you guys can kind of experience this with me. Maybe I should have done that with the last one. I'll do it from here on out. So the first paragraph of this one is Jinx lifted his nose and scented the air. He reminded me of a wild animal whenever he did this. And even after all our years together, it still creeped me out. Of course, it didn't help that his skin was white chalk, his lips dark red, and his eyes covered in large blue crescents resembling sinister eyebrows. He turned to me and smiled, red lips stretched wider than humanely possible. He's close. Well, it described a clown. <laughs> I've just seen that another line further down is the combination created a real lunatic serial killer vibe, which I knew amused him. Interesting, okay. I'm gonna go read more and I'll tell you how we do. <laughs> okay, one of the things I've instantly noticed, the writing, at least in the beginning of this, is a little bit heavy handed because for instance, this is like the connecting sentences of two different paragraphs. So it basically reads like this. Good thing I always made sure to wear comfortable shoes. Speaking of shoes, Jinx's oversized red and white slapped the sidewalk like bloated swim fins. What are swim fins? <laughs> that connection where it's just like, oh, you've just mentioned a thing. Speaking of that seems pretty heavy handed for me. I'll see how the rest of the chapter goes. <laughs> okay, no, the heavy handed writing continued. This is how it further explains the clown's appearance. Jinx's appearance always attracts attention. Who wouldn't look at a six foot bold clown wearing a grey business suit, a blue tie with orange polka dots, a large yellow flower pinned to his lapel, a WWJD bracelet which stands for what would Joker do, and of course those gigantic shoes. I, d I just I feel like there were more subtle ways to be like here's what he's wearing <laughs> than listing it out but again it's the start of a book so maybe this is just me being harsh I, d I don't know <laughs> this book is chaos incarnate <laughs> Or at least the first chapter is. We seem to have our main character, Audra, and this clown, a living nightmare of sorts, hunting for another nightmare that is causing general chaos, it's harming people, so they're trying to hunt it down. But in the beginning, they're walking the streets, they're tracking it, and they get interrupted by a group of guys who basically start taking the mick out of the clown, start trying to wind him up, because apparently everyone can see this nightmare, which is a choice. <laughs> I thought that like the nightmare would be something that only she can see. But apparently everybody can see this clown walking around. So they start trying to wind up the clown and they're just like, oh, are you a sad clown or are you a funny clown? And so the clown just beats them up <laughs> and she tries to stop them. And then the other nightmare comes back and just chaos ensues from there. <laughs> so <laughs> this seems really wacky to me. It's definitely urban fantasy because they're quite literally brawling in the streets. You've got people being stabbed and it is very much happening in the middle of a city. People are getting their phones out to record it and stuff. So it's definitely urban fantasy vibes, which isn't necessarily a thing that I read too much of, although it's not unheard of. But I'm really intrigued as to how these nightmares become a thing because she even said herself, like who produced this nightmare that they're trying to track? Because I believe it takes the form of an assassin that has things it can throw and like 
infect people with its shards or something, I don't know. The weapons it uses can create a kind of infection on the wounded. She literally said herself, like, who imagined this? <laughs> who brought this into creation? Who created this? I really want to read the actual world building of this to see how something goes from idea to an actual thing in the real world that can be seen and touched and cause harm. So I'm really intrigued about that. I don't know what I would think to the whole clown situation. I think I would have to get used to it basically, but it seems like it would be a pretty quick read. A lot of this so far has been dialogue, so it's just like a really quick thing to read through. And both the dialogue and the narration has a very modern feel to it in that it doesn't use more words than is needed. It literally is just somebody talking. So I feel like this, as I said, could be very quick to get through. So I'm wondering if I read it more would I get into it. I think this is definitely something I could save for like, a vlog of just reading weird books. It seems wacky. I think that's the only thing I can say about this judging from the first chapter. What? <laughs> so following the theme of wacky, the next one up is the Toy Story one, the imaginary corpse, the one in which we're following a toy detective dinosaur. <laughs> I'm not convinced guys, I'm not convinced, but let's see what it's like. Okay, so for this one, we have a prologue before the actual first chapter, but this is how it starts. Are you okay? I'm down here. Yeah, the sunflower yellow stuffed triceratops. I know. It's okay. I know you're overwhelmed. I was too. We all were. Do you need anything? Food? Water? To talk about whatever just happened to you? No, he's fine. No, he's always fine here. You've got questions. Of course you've got questions. And I'm happy to answer them. But why don't we start at the start and I'll tell you why you're talking to a plush dinosaur. Here are two things you absolutely need to know. First, in case you didn't know, you're an idea. I'm not sure if you're an imaginary friend or a novel's protagonist or a mascot or what. But if you're here, you're an idea. Second, you were loved. You were loved enduringly and unequivocally, and that made you capital R real. Not an idea, an idea, capitalized. But then whatever just happened to your person, your creator, it happened and it was horrible and it affected you. I won't pretend to know what and I won't ask, but whatever it is, your person couldn't keep you around. For most ideas, that's it, lights out. But not you, you're real. So what happens to you? Well, what happens is that you end up here, the still real. The underside of the imagination that nobody remembers to clean. It can be a rough place, but it can also be beautiful. Fortunately, you have me to help you find the latter instead of waltzing face first into the former. My name's Tippy, ex-imaginary friend and once and current detective. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> this reminds me of a very particular scene in Inside Out. Not Toy Story, Inside Out. <laughs> With, what's he called? Bing Bong. It reminds me of Bing Bong from Inside Out. If you know, you know. But then chapter one actually starts with that case, the one that starts with the screaming corn. <laughs> Every time I talk about this case, I wish it started differently. Some mysterious person walking into my office or my best friend in the whole world asking for help fleeing to Mexico or even me trying to help my person learn her ABCs. You know, a real detective story, something that speaks to my soul. Not one where I get hired out of Mr. Float's root barium by a living carnation of someone's half-baked TV pitch. Of course, if I always got what I wanted, I wouldn't be where I am. So bigger picture, I guess this is for the best. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on, but honestly, I like how it's written. <laughs> it seems to accept that it's quirky and I like that. So. I'm gonna keep reading. I'll let you know my thoughts. <laughs> I know that this dinosaur triceratops thing is a detective and it seems to be talking about its detective skills as if it's a thing that's just like built into it which makes sense if it's been imagined to be a detective. It literally just said the detective stuff is magic, just trust me, the longer explanation for it doesn't help much. But I'm kind of hoping that doesn't mean it's just gonna bypass it and make it an easy thing where it's like all of the mysteries are just immediately solved because, you know, it has the ability to solve everything with its detective stuff that's like magic and you don't actually have to do anything. I feel like then you wouldn't have a story if that was the case, so we'll see. Oh my god, when was this published? Hang on. This was published in 2019 and we literally have an on-page conversation saying, what's your name? Can I ask you for your pronouns? I don't think I've ever seen that in a book before, especially not a fantasy one. Mm. 
I like it. Oh, this is so reminding me of Inside Out in a really weird way that I didn't expect in any way, shape or form. <laughs> And also Toy Story, like the Toy Story part is accurate because this toy is literally just describing it's human. I did not expect to be reacting so much to this. <laughs> oh, I did not expect this to read as it did. <laughs> I feel like this genuinely could be a Toy Story book. <laughs> <laughs> like in the best ways. I don't even like Toy Story that much, but I think because it feels like a combination of Toy Story and Inside Out for me, I'm really surprised. I'm really surprised. So in chapter one in this one, Tippy the dinosaur comes across a nightmare or an idea. This is an idea that's been abandoned and he feels very neglected and it's reacting. So it's been lost in the child's memory, I think, to a place called Idea. And because it's really upset by that, it's causing harm in this place because the place is adapting to what this thing is wanting. So it wants to go home and so it's changing the environment around it and like harming other people who are there. And so Tippy tries to calm it down and be like, come with me, it's fine, I'll show you around. It's basically what the first chapter is, but this is written in a way that doesn't make me think this is ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, every time it reminds me that it's a triceratops, I'm just like, did you have to remind me of that? Because I'm kind of just like, I don't know how far I can suspend my disbelief. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I'm really surprised. Wow, that was an experience. Let's move on to the final one, which is the huge thousand deaths of Ardor Ben. So this is the one that's like a heist. Apparently there's dragons. And I think this is the one which would appeal to me the most out of the lot. But I've been surprised already, so who knows? <laughs> the first paragraph of this one is, Ardo Ben was running late, or was he? I'd prefer to think that everyone else in the greater chain was consistently early, with unreasonable expectations for him to be the same. That has very much got the, the queen is never late, everybody else just arrives early <laughs> vibes. <laughs> Regardless, this time it was all right to keep his appointment waiting. It was a stew tactic, and stew tastes better the longer it cooked. Ard skipped up the final stairs and onto the third floor. Remote's Azel clearly wasn't the big fish he purported. Rickety wooden try story in the slums of Marrow. Ard found the whole thing rather distasteful, especially after Lord Eunice. Now that was something. Proper stone mansion with a heat grit hearth. In every room, servants, cooks, light grit lanterns that ignited with the pull of a chain. Ardhar suspected that Lord Eunice wiped his backside with lace. Different island, different ruse, today was Rumor Azel, no matter how unaccommodating his hideout appeared. Okay. That confused me for a hot second, but now I'm, I'm following. <laughs> I shall keep reading and see where we go. keeps making jokes about women and I'm just like is this gonna be a theme or is it just like a an initial conversation thing this gives me big great quotes vibes but with less honor <laughs> the first chapter of this is a heist basically or just a robbery. Our main character seems to have duped a duke of some sort or just someone with a lot of power so that he could steal a box off him and there's a big grand escape situation but the humour in this definitely reminds me of Great Coats especially between the two characters who are involved. It's very much the sort of thing where it's like they're just kind of bantering between each other and also admitting that they didn't actually know if something was going to work but they're just going to play it off as if it was all meant to go that way and it was a great mastermind who came up with the plan and yeah definitely big Great Coats vibes. The first chapter doesn't really give me much in terms of why the story is going to be quite this long. I imagine if the very first chapter is showing this indication of like robbery basically. We're just going to see more of that on a grander scale. It seems already just from the way that they can kind of dupe their way through different statuses in terms of one of the characters already tended to be of a higher status than they weren't and pretended to be something that they weren't so that they could get into a place. I feel like this could turn into quite a complicated thing of politics possibly but I am intrigued to see how the actual fantasy elements come into it because we do have mention of dragons. The actual the thing before the um first chapter literally starts with they fed a corpse to the dragon. So this idea of grit apparently comes from human bones being digested through a dragon. That is one of the key components of the story already. 
which I find really fascinating actually. And the fact that people don't seem to know the origin of that anymore. I'm just like, so do people know that dragons are still a thing? Are they still a thing? Because this is skeletal. <laughs> so I have many questions and I think that I could actually really enjoy this one. How long is this actually? This is, wow, the glossary is huge. We have a whole classification table in the back. Oh my God. But the actual story is just over 700 pages and then we have all of this, which is a glossary explaining. <laughs> so I feel like this is one that you could really sink your teeth into and learn about the world and how it works and how different areas and people understand the world that they live in. I'm actually really intrigued. It's not something that I can judge whether it would be like a new favourite book or not yet, but having read the first chapter I do think it's something I'd be interested in going back to, especially because I do see the comparisons between Great Coats and how much I've been enjoying that series. This could be a good shout for when I finish that series if I want something similar, possibly. That's, that's what I'm thinking, that's what I'm thinking. With that, we have successfully tried chapters of these four very random books. <laughs> so what is the verdict on these four? I can actually see a very clear order in my interest of these and how they turned out. So Night Terror is one which I can already tell the writing is not for me because like I said, it felt pretty heavy handed, but I am also kind of intrigued by the clown concept. Like I just love weird stories so every time I know something is weird, I kind of want to read it just to experience it. But I don't know if I'd be able to get past the writing. Maybe it does improve the further on I read. I would probably have to read maybe like 50 pages or so to see if it continues. But out of the ones in this haul, this is the one that I had more criticisms for, if any. So then we would have this one, the sci-fi one. I feel like I had less comments on this one out of all of them because it was just a lot of information and getting used to sci-fi. I think this one would definitely need more time to get used to, but like I said, it would be a good option for me if I wanted to try a different kind of sci-fi because this one seems more plot heavy and like actual intensive fighting. Like I said, it's a military sci-fi, so it would be very different to the sorts I've already got on my shelves, which seem to be very character heavy. So it could be a good option for that. And then I think I would have to put in the imaginary corpse as the one that I am the most surprised about. I'm still like, I did not expect <laughs> to be so convinced by it. <laughs> but I actually kind of do want to continue reading this now because I'm intrigued about having a Toy Story book. I'm really tempted to do a vlog on this. Like I'm actually tempted to do a full reading vlog on this book <laughs> just because it sounds bizarre. But it's actually written pretty well judging from the first chapter. <laughs> and then we have, of course, the big chunky fantasy, which is the one I'm most intrigued about in terms of wanting to know the story and the characters and all the usual things that I would look for in a fantasy story. And I think this is the one which, had I read the full thing, I would actually be more inclined to do so. This is definitely the one which is the most up my alley in terms of what I would usually read and the nice counterbalance to the wacky stuff that I've just experienced. <laughs> so this haul was a journey. This was a whole journey. <laughs> I feel like I've truly experienced so many different reactions and emotions just from trying a chapter of these four books. I've had a great time filming this video. <laughs> I'm still just laughing at how strange this is. So yes, that is this video wrapped up. My thoughts on my mystery haul from A Box of Stories. If you want to experience something similar to this, if you also want a mystery haul that could end up just as wacky as mine, or could give you a new favourite book, then like I said, I do have a discount, which is just the word frolic for 30% off. And again, the link will be down below if you do want to check it out. So do be sure to do so. And another big thank you to A Box of Stories for working with me on this video. I know I always say at the end of a video, oh, if you've read these books, then let me know. But genuinely, if you've read these books, then let me know, because I have never heard of any of them before today. I'm baffled for so many reasons, but I want to know your thoughts and also just let me know your thoughts on like subscription boxes in general. Is this something you would go for? Do you like a mystery haul? Tell me all of the things down in the comments. But other than that, I shall leave you to get on with your day. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then remember to leave a like and a comment so we know that you're here. If you're not subscribed already, then please consider doing so. Down in the description box, you'll find all of the information I've mentioned in this video, all of my social media and other bookish stuff as well. So be sure to check that out if you haven't already. But for now, I hope you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.